You can call my phone number, this number here, at any time, and you have to talk to a person. You will never be able to leave a message until you talk to a person. Um, important today is communication. I hear time and time again how people never call me back. People don't respond, this, that. You call, I will come. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. Welcome everyone to Rochester Business Connections. I am here with Jason DiBiase. How are we doing today, Jason? Doing great, Ben. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, I think I say this every time nowadays, but this is probably the funnest part about my day, having these conversations. And, you know, Jason, you run Rochester Pest Pro. If anybody wants to Google you guys, you guys are just covered in five-star reviews. Rochester loves you. And of course they love you. You basically keep their residences, their their workplaces clean of all that that junk, those termites, the bed bugs, the things that drive us crazy, right? Um, give us, you know, a, a thousand foot view of what you do at Rochester Pest Pros. So what we do is we are a locally owned family based pest control company. Um, we provide general pest control services, you know, in Monroe County, essentially. Um, we do both commercial and residential. Um, and we do all kinds of accounts from um, manufacturing warehouses to office buildings to um, schools to daycares to uh, you name it pretty much. Um, we do a lot of residential stuff um, and residential, you know, services include, you know, maintenance services for mice, rodents, bees, spiders, stink bugs. So it's, you know, it's pretty inclusive of what we do. You know, so it's definitely, it's fun. You know, I've been doing this a long time and I really love what I do, you know, so. I love that. Did you guys find yourself doing more commercial, more residential? Is, is there a preference or you're pretty much <clears throat> here to help anybody? Um, well, in the segment, you know, my business is, is essentially segmented into two different parts, you know, commercial and residential. Um, the commercial aspect of it is more of the monthly maintenance service. You know, and it's providing, you know, sanitation standards, service standards for, you know, restaurants, bars, you know, all kinds of places. Um, we are the first line of defense when restaurants that have problems um, need some help, you know. And it's just so that way they stay clean, they stay, you know, fresh. Everything is where it needs to be. Um, you know, the shoe on the other foot is that I'm a consumer, right? So I want to make sure that places that I'm, you know, I'm uh, helping in the community and supporting and, and you know, participating in it and being a customer of them. I want them to be at a certain standard. You know, as being a customer, it's important that you have a good place that you can trust. You know, a lot of times people equate pest control into, you know, restaurant sanitation. Oh, I went to a place and I got sick. You know, it's not just because, you know, of what it is or what's going on. It's just, you know, what policies and procedures and things do you have in place? And it's my job to help, you know, business owners, especially you know, find their way through, you know, dealing with health inspections, a lot of the other stuff too. So there's a lot of behind the scenes. Unfortunately, this year with COVID, as everybody knows, um, we've been impacted significantly, you know, and it's not because of the customers don't want to do the services with us. It's just unfortunately due to the circumstances that everybody's in, you know, with other, you know, requirements and restrictions that, you know, the different health departments and the states are putting on certain kinds of businesses. It makes it hard for people to operate. So, you know, we've had a tough year with commercial side, but, you know, we just keep on going. Yeah, it, it has been a tough year. It, it's good that you guys are navigating. It's good that you are helping businesses um, be stable. And, you know, restaurants, obviously, you want it to be clean. I've spoken to a landscaper recently, a cleaner recently. The little things that often go unnoticed, like, you know, that just the hygiene of your 
commercial, your 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 restaurant, anything like that, the curb appeal. These are the kind of things that often go unnoticed, but they're pivotal for your customers and your clients to be happy and safe in your establishment. So thank you for that. Um, let, let's talk a little bit more about the COVID because we touched on it and so much feedback from different industries on how 2020 ultimately completely changed the landscape of how we see work in general. Um, give us maybe an example of a challenge that you've seen this year and um, maybe some ways you pivoted or overcame that challenge. So, you know, a lot of times in business and stuff, um, a lot of places get, you know, successful businesses have systems and procedures and policies in place, right? And you want to be able to do those things, you know, function as a team, as a group, as a unit. When there's things that are happening like COVID, um, it's impacting everybody, you know. Um, sometimes when things happen, different things, outbreaks happen or whatever, it's usually, you know, sometimes it's segmented to one business, one kind of business, certain kinds of businesses. COVID is impacting everybody. And I don't care if you're a barber shop. I don't care if you're a carpet cleaner, an office cleaner, a manufacturer, a call center. Um, it's impacting everybody. And we're all in the same boat. And, you know, um, <clears throat> when this initially started back in March or April, you know, it took a lot of people by surprise, businesses. You know what I mean? This is nothing that any business owner could have ever planned for. You know, we all have contingencies and things that we're going to go to. But this has been something that's been unprecedented. You know, and people don't know how to deal with it and don't know how to pivot and find a way to make things work. One of the biggest things for me is all of a sudden um, in March, my phones literally stopped ringing. Um, it wasn't that I was important. You know, we were deemed essential, right? And which is great. Come to find out, even though you're deemed essential, doesn't mean that people are going to call you. Okay. Everybody was literally scared for March and April. You know, and we lost a significant amount of business, you know, from there on to now. Um, and most of the business that we lost was commercial. Um, and again, was because of, you know, when everything happened, some businesses just didn't come back. They didn't reopen. Um, or some of the businesses that were on the edge literally now have kind of fallen in. Um, it's impacting businesses that's been around for over 100 years in our community. Um, you know, wow, what, is, what an impact that has. You know, it's huge. Um, so I've literally had to change my entire strategy. You know what I mean? Um, we were doing things really well, but now I needed to be top of mind. I needed to find have people find me, know me, see me, call me. And those were the things in short order. Um, and a lot of the different marketing tactics that I was using before, it just was not the way, the norm anymore. You know, the normal that you were used to doing doesn't exist. You had to find new ways to get out there. Um, for me, luckily, TV was one way that I was able to initially give a good shot in the arm, keep things rolling, and then community outreach, and then really developing my networking and my relationships. Um, and that's how I've been able to literally get through. And not to mention my staff and, you know, my customers. Um, man, I can't tell you, especially my residential customers, you know, people are so generous, so giving, so wanting to give back, you know, and really embrace what our company philosophy is. And that essentially is, you know, give back, be fair, be honest, and do the right thing, even when nobody's watching, you know, and that's, to me, a core value that I think we have done really well with our business. And I think that's where we, that's why we're still here. You you said so much there. I love Jason. Ultimately, like you just said, do 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 good work. Like even if nobody's watching, you know, help your people. Networking, using the new medium of TV, which wasn't around back in the day, uh, using community outreach. Can we expand on any of those concepts here? Maybe community outreach and what you're doing here in Rochester. So one of the things that I was able to really do is, um, you know, as a company, we were always committed to doing, you know, community volunteering, doing other stuff. Um, I was luckily and able enough to be aligned with the Pirate Toy Fund here in Rochester. Um, it was an organization that, believe it or not, is just amazing, the things that they're going to do. Um, looking into it more and going, geez, how can I make this as a company? How can I give back as a company to the community that we work and serve in? Everybody supports me in the community. 
anybody that calls me and does business with me is supporting me. And I feel as a business, especially in 2020, for all the ups and downs, and people staying home, those are the jobs and daycare. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. I found out the Pirate Toy Fund, and their key mission is that they give away toys. They give away toys. Hmm. Last year, they gave away thir- over 33,000 toys. Can you believe it? In a community of Rochester. You know, um, and everybody says to me, well, uh, there's toys for tots. No, absolutely. They're all great organizations. The difference between Pirate Toy Fund and Toys for Tots, we collect toys all year round and we give toys all year round. And we have a distribution network. We have over 70 community partners in the community that we team up with and give toys to those kids that really need it. Um, and going back to COVID, it's been a heck of a year. Wegmans has been a great sponsor, great partnership of ours. They were always generous, constantly giving toys, collecting toys for us. COVID hits, all of a sudden, you know, we got to change things a little bit. It's a larger company. I get it. There's a lot more liabilities. There's a lot of more things in play that maybe I don't necessarily come into all the time. But they said, hey, look, at let's we're going to have to forego collecting some toys for right now. But we want to do more. We want to do different things for you. Great. They left us a shortage roughly between twelve to 18,000 toys for this year. As a non-for-profit, you know, all non-for-profits are struggling, you know. So, again, it's another part of pivoting. I've tried to find a way to roll them into my business, you know, um, community give backs, community different things, outreaching, you know. And so far, so good it's been working. And I'm, I can't tell you how happy it is to be able to team up with a partnership in a company or an organization like the Pirate Toy Fund. It's just it's remarkable. Jason, Jason, I love it. I love seeing you get lit up about it. And, you know, everyone watching or listening at home, at the end, we always like to shout out how to keep in touch with Jason Rochester Pest Pro. Not every one of you might need pest services this moment, but I know every single one of you have something to spare, have a toy that you can give. So let's shout out the best way to donate to the pirate toy fund and keep in touch with them. So the pirate toy fund, we created a virtual online toy store. Essentially you can go on to PTF toy store.com backslash Rochester pass pro. You can make a donation there. Um, part of that donation there is monetary, a dollar, five dollars. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's for the kids. Um, what I'm doing is I'm running a special from now to the end of the year, pretty much. Anybody that wants to visit my website, make a donation to the Pirate Toy Fund, I'm going to give you $75 off your first service. I don't care what it is because it's just about giving back to the community. And I think it's a great way to give back. Um, we get a lot of new customers all the time. And a lot of people are, are making donations. A lot of people are giving back. Um, I just want to give back to the community that's been so great to me, especially – in the year that we're in right now, it's just really important to me. I love it, Jason. And listen, guys, a dollar, it sounds like you can donate a dollar. It is a time of year where some of us are strapped for cash because we're buying gifts for our family, for our friends. You guys, like you said before, you're gifting toys to children year round, right? That's it. We're, you know, we're gifting toys year round. And here's the thing. There's people in this community and other businesses the support, I can't tell you, is just remarkable. I mean, we just teamed up with Mark's Pizzeria. Mm. Um, you know, it's just amazing. You know, you can drop a toy off at Mark's Pizzeria. You can go to Van Bortel, any of the Van Bortel dealerships. Um, you know, there's a lot of places, Barnes and Nobles. I mean, there's a lot of all the malls. You know, the malls will have the toy boxes there until the end of the year. It's just a lot of good giving back in, in a time where everybody needs it. You know, there's so much negativity right now going on in the world, you know, and it's like you really want to do something right and special. And it's not much. I mean, if you're somewhere buying a toy for your kids, you know, pick up an extra one of whatever it is that you're buying for your kids. Cause I can promise you any kid will love whatever they get, especially if they don't have something. And, you know, it's just been really a tough year for everybody, you know, business, professionally, personally, you know, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough time here, and we got to come together as a community. It's important that we do things like this to let everybody know. Yeah, optimism, man. We're we're gonna get through this, and if we make those positive actions to help 100%. the community, you know, it it 
they call it karma, right? You know, you, you help others, it'll come back to you. You know, and that's the thing. That's and so important to me, doing the right thing, you know, being honest and fair with people, you know, and some companies, you know, don't always embrace that all the time, but we do, you know, and I'm straightforward with people, you know, if there's something that I can do for you and I'm, you know, I'll tell you if it's something that's not a right fit or a good fit, you know, I'll also tell you that as well, but it's important that we have a good understanding and, you know, I don't look as my customers as just, you know, customers. I want to build a relationship with, with them. They, they they mean everything to me. It's my business. Um, you know, and my employees and my guys, you know, I'm just grateful all around for everybody that what they do for me and my company and, and, I'm just blessed and, I, and I'm, I'm grateful. I love it, you know? Jason. Hey man, are, are you a native to Rochester? You're so supportive of our community here. Yep. So I grew up in East Rochester, um, you know, and I've lived in Rochester, you know, pretty much my young, you know, there are uh, teen year, teenage years, younger years. I grew up, you know, East Rochester, um, you know, and I've lived in Henrietta now. Um, my business is in Henrietta and I just find it really fulfilling to, you know, live and work in the communities that you, that support you, you know, and it, it, it goes into every part of my business. Right. Right. And you work full time when you're not working, you're helping the community. What, what are you doing for fun, man? Where will we find you on a weekend where you're taking a break? I love hanging out with my kids. Um, my boys are, and my wife are the greatest things to me. You know, um, I love spending time with them. Um, I like to play golf. I'm a huge Yankees fan. Um, I love the Yankees. Um, didn't have such a good year this year, you know, but I just, you know, I like to just be with my family and, and, and my friends and, and, and that's really about it. Cool. Cool. You know? Yeah. Family first. It's important. I mean, that's why I get up every day and it's why I do what I do. Uh, if I didn't have my family, you know, involved in, in, in supporting me, you know, and also too, not that my employees, you know, um, everybody that's worked for me has been with me since day one, pretty much. Um, you know, I started as a guy coming out of the corporate world doing pest control for many years. You know, I decided one day that it was it was my time to shine and to give back and fix all those all those things that I wish I could do when I wasn't the boss, when I didn't really have a say. And now I do, you know, and it's it's great to be able to have that say of who I work for what I do for people, et cetera. That's just a huge feeling to have. And it's, it's great to be able to give back like that. I hear you. I I'm with you. Let, let's talk about pest control, Jason. <laughs> let's give some tips because um, I'm just an ordinary guy. That's probably dirtier than the average person. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Here's the thing. A lot of times in sex and roads and stuff, sanitation is important, but it's not, you know, the deal breaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this time of year, especially, we're getting a lot of calls from mice. People are like, oh my God, I got mice. Okay. You know, it's, it's fair, but question, how are they getting in? You know what I mean? That's the key point mm. with rodents, with mice especially. How are they getting in? If they can't get in, they can't be a problem. So with our company, what we do is we typically start out with an inspection, right? And we come out and, and then figure out what is going on. And at the end of the day, we're going to give you the best options on what we would recommend moving forward. You know, um, we try to be fair, we be honest, but we stand behind what we do. And that's the thing where I think, again, another separator for us is that, you know, you're not going to just see a million different people come into your house. You know what I mean? Right. There's consistency, there's continuity, and we give you the realistic expectations of what to expect going forward if you're going to work with us. Now, let's say I don't have mice and I don't have a problem that I can at least see at this time. What daily actions can we be doing to, you know, obviously the moment I have an issue, I'm going to call you. But in a perfect scenario, I wouldn't have to because I have the ability and the autonomy to take care of things myself. I mean, can you give us a free tip to sure. try to avoid the mice from ever even coming 100%. in the first place, man? You know, the biggest tip that I can do is just say be observant. Pay attention to your surroundings. I tell people all the time, you know, I can't believe this happened. Well, Mrs. Jones, you know, you live here, right? And if you started to notice this happening over here or something's weird, doesn't seem out of place and it consistently keeps happening, you know, you're going to know more sooner than I will, you know, just be observant of what's going on. 
if something doesn't seem right, you know, check it out, you know, follow through, keep things clean, keep things orderly, nice and tidy. Um, you know, in the change of seasons, we go around, you know, in the wintertime before it gets cold. Go around and walk around the outside of your house. Check to see if there's any openings. Check the windows, the doors, you know, things like that. Um, inside the house, you can, you know, just make sure your kitchen's clean, everything's organized, you know, the garbage is taken out consistently, you know, just the typical, you know, the usual things that you would, you know, expect to do. When you give insects or rodents an opportunity, they're going to capitalize upon it, mm. you know. So if you just be diligent, practice good sanitation stuff, you know, making sure that you keep on top of your stuff, cleaning, organized, etc. most times you're able to spot something before it happens, you know. And if not, call us. I almost can't even blame the rodent. They just took the opportunity to capitalize because I wasn't paying attention. I'll give you a quick tip with rodents. Yeah. All rodents need a few things. Food, shelter, and water. Okay? If you provide any of those or all of those, they're never going away. And that's, you know, so like I said, if they can't get in, they can't be a problem. And it's the same thing with ants and spiders and stink bugs and box other beetles. You know, and there's different things that we could do. You know, we can do a residential exterior spray treatment. You know, we can treat the exterior for most crawling and flying insects and stop things before they really become a problem for you in the wintertime. You know, good maintenance is the key. Um, you know, look at it as an insurance policy, right? We all have health, we all have car insurance, health insurance, right? We have insurance. We know that we have to pay for it and we hope that we never have to use it. But if we do, we got some coverage. It's the same thing with pest control. You know, if we get a maintenance program down for you and we're just checking up quarterly every three months, you know, sometimes it's, it's good to have just as a peace of mind. You know, we offer that a lot too. So there's a lot of different things that we do. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, peace of mind is one of the most important things in my life. And I believe a lot of people would say the same thing, just knowing that you've got a safe, sanitary place, especially if you're a restaurant, especially if you have a workplace, um, just making sure everybody's safe and sanitary and lots of great tips. I'm going to, honestly, I'm going to have tunnel vision for the next week as I check my windows, check the creeks and crevices. And, you know, it's winter time. I'm, ima I'm imagining that this is the worst time of year. Um, rodents activity, you know, our business, believe it or not, is broken down into seasonalities. As crazy as it sounds, it's very predictable. You know what I mean? Certain times of year, you're going to see more mice. Certain times of year, you're going to see more stink bugs and backs of the beetles. Certain times of the year, you're going to see more bees. It's just, you know, but it's teaming up with a professional that knows what they're doing, you know, and being accessible and being there and returning calls and emails and being attentive to your needs, you know. Um, it's just what it is. And, you know, I'm a small business. This is how we take care of our families, you know, and we need all the support that we can get from the community. And as much support as we get, we need to give it back. You're a pro, Jason. I, I appreciate that. You know, you're, you care about the community. You care about your, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not perfect at this, but I like to try to put on my bullshit or dar and, you know, I like you. You seem like a good guy who genuinely cares. And I would trust you in um, my home here, which is, you know, very close to, to hard for me. So that's an important thing. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing. I mean, my business, you know, we're a pest control company. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we do, you know, pest control and stuff like that. But I always say it's much more than that. Um, I'm a testament to tell you right now. I got through this year so far where I am because of the relationships that I have with my customers and my networking contacts that I have. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of times where, you know, it really comes down to your relationships with people, you know, and when you go to somebody's house, you have to respect it as it's your house, you know, and I would never do anything at your house that I wouldn't do at my house. And, and people say that, but we actually do that, right. you know, um, it's just the right thing to do. And you have to be fair and honest with people. And if you can't, you shouldn't be in business at any, any kind of business. You know, we all is being a contractor. Sometimes, you know, we start our business. I get lumped into the plow guys, right? Those plow guys, I gave them all my money. They never showed up. 
you know, was that the case or was it just the guy that was having a bad day or was it the guy that just was not a good business owner? Right. You know, that didn't have integrity, you know, right. and it's, it's so hard, but if you differentiate yourself to do the right thing and people know that and they can, they can count on you and trust you, it goes a long way. Yeah. Trust does go a long way. Jason, this has been fun. I want to move to the rapid, bo- rap, blah, blah, blah. Rapid the, fire. Let's go. Rapid fire round. Either or questions. You can fill in the blank, but just simple stuff to get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Coffee or tea? Coffee for sure. Beer or wine? Both. Are you a morning person? Absolutely. You wear, you've got you know pests all season around, but do you have a favorite season personally? I love summertime. I know it's crazy. I love, I love yellow jackets. Love I it. love bees. Um, everybody's running away from them. I'm not. I love it. <laughs> it is. I have one of those crazy fears where you know. I know that it's not going to harm me, but still, bees just like, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> it's fascinating how they build. I'm telling you, it's like the circle of life. It's just remarkable. Like, here it is one day, and then a week later, it's like this huge. It's like, wow. It's impressive, huh? I love it. It's cool. It's cool. Summertime, uh, what kind of ice cream are you eating? Oh, my God. What kind am I not eating? What kind I love of, ice cream. What kind of toppings do you like? Everything. Give it to me all. I want all of it. <laughs> I love Every it. Kind. I love it. Dude, summertime, man. Dude, I love it. Oh, my God. Abbott's? Ooh, delicious. My One first, of my all-time favorites. Yeah, my first job was at Bill Gray's. We had an Abbott's, so I've been hooked since I was in high school. So shout out to Bill Gray's and, have, and Abbott's. Listen, I wanted to get a job at Abbott's, but I said to myself, I can't because I'll eat all your profit. <laughs> so I just never did when I was in high school. Everybody else did, but not me. Because I love ice cream that much, I know. Jason, do you got a phone preference, Android or iOS? I have both. You have both. Cool. Do you have do you like either one more? 50-50? Uh, you know, they're both I don't know, they're both good. I mean, I like them both. Android's cool. It's respectable. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're always trying to be like Apple. Apple's good. It just, they slow you down after a while. You know, they got to go buy the new one and it's like a thousand dollars or more. It's like, wow. Right. Cool, man. I, you're, you're the first person I asked that was kind of straight down the center. I like to ask that question cause it's polarizing and no one really gets that mad, you know, based on the answer to that kind of thing. Um, dude, yeah. it's, it's been fun. I, I hope I don't need you, but the moment I do, I'll give you a call. Um, how do people keep in touch? How do they call Rochester press? I see you got the phone number in the background here. Let's talk yep. about number website, social medias. What's the best way to reach yep. out? So, um, obviously you can call our office, which is right here, 486-4815. Um, they can visit our website, rochesterpestpro.com. Um, I've got a huge social media following on Facebook, Instagram. I don't know. I've got a lot of different things all over the place. Um, and just essentially a call, anything, text, you know, email. Uh, I'm always accessible. Good stuff. We, we covered a lot quickly, but is there anything we missed? Something that if I was in the industry, maybe I just knew you a little bit better that I would have asked, but I, you know, didn't think about asking. Um... No, I think you covered a lot of stuff. The one thing that I want to tell everybody, and this is kind of, I think, I take this, I take pride in this. You can call my phone number, this number here, at any time, and you have to talk to a person. You will never be able to leave a message until you talk to a person. Um, important today is communication. I hear time and time again how people never call me back. People don't respond, this, that. You call, I will come. I'm happy to hear it. Jason, it's been fun. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, and I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this, rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.